Hey guys, I'm here. Welcome back for episode four of Netflix's Yu Yu Hakusho. In the last episode, we got to meet Genkai as Kuwabara and Yusuke took up her training in order to get stronger after a brutal and humiliating defeat at the hands of Hiei. While that was the first episode where I felt like the pacing really kind of hurt the, at least the impact of the story that they were telling at the time, I'm hopeful that we, when we move forward, once we kind of get past that, these last two will bring it home. One out of five, that's not too bad odds, you know? I still didn't dislike the episode. It's just the first one definitely where I didn't feel a lot of that emotional weight. There were still some really great moments. Like I said before, the scene with Kuwabara, I think they executed that really nicely. All the stuff on the island, the stuff between Kurama and Hiei, the stuff back with Team Tagoro, not to mention Elder Tagoro being a little deceptive, a little, little sneak as he pretended to be Hiei, kidnapped Keiko in order to lure the team to the island. And now we got our squad together, we're heading in, we're building up to our Team Yorameshi versus Team Tagoro, and we'll see what happens next, guys. Let's go ahead and strap in. If you wanna see the full-length reaction, check it out over on Patreon, or if you got a memorable channel, it gets you access as well. It is in watch-along format, so you will need your own footage to sync up with the time codes for reaction the entire episode. Over there, you get the same thing for all the other shows and movies that we cover in the channel. You also get to suggest and vote on what movies you react to each month. We got monthly Q&As, behind-the-scenes footage, trying to make it worth your while, since you're gonna be supporting the channel. But guys, at the end of the day, I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this reaction, at least leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe if not already, because it really does go a long way with helping these videos out. And with that all said and out of the way, let's hop into Episode four, here we go. <laughs> Looks like somebody's getting a little impatient. We got ourselves a little gauntlet. I can't wait to see us uh, square off in our our team v team breakdown. You know, I, I want to see everybody's Everybody's fights, man. Because that's what this show has done really well so far, is the the, the fights has definitely all been real fun. Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> that is definitely something humans would do. I like that look over to Hiei with that realization. I'm sorry, the shape of that island, my, my my brain went right to the gutter. Looks like something straight out of Adam and Eve. Oh, we want to play some Russian roulette? Oh God. The master of probability. Mm. Who knows? Maybe if you told him, uh, he'd uh, have a little more oomph to his punches for vengeance and all that jazz. Welcome, Keiko. You have won a brand new cruise to a pleasure island. Yeah. Gotta go fast. He <laughs> Somebody, I saw a comment and it made me chuckle. And let's say actually like makes it kind of funnier because it's honestly a little true. Someone said they actually just reversed Kuwabara's pompadour. If you look at the way it's shaped, the the what should be at the top of his head is at the back is at the bottom of his neck. So if you like rotated it around, you almost do have the perfect hair. <laughs> and it's not wrong, man. Look at that. I can't wait to see Karaba pop off. Ooh. Yes! Whoa! Dude, I love the Karasu Karaba fight. Alright, we're splintering off. Oh, I, will we do that? I mean, that would, in my brain, I didn't expect I didn't think we would go anywhere near all of that. 
Will we... Oh, fuck. Tease! Oh, god damn. <laughs> Dude, I, I, they, I, I think one of the things I'm the most impressed about in this is fucking buoy. Like, look at that. Dude, your Dark Souls boss meter just fills up the moment you walked in this room. Jeez. Yeah, here we got the screens, we got our matchups, our stats. This is our dark tournament, I guess. <laughs> Which, like I said, I'm okay with that I, in the end. As much as I would have loved to have seen a full-blown tournament, though, it, I mean, again, like I also said, logistically, it would be so hard to, Jesus Christ, get it! <laughs> to pull off without an insane budget. God. Woo! I think this might already be my favorite fight in the in the series. There's our first bomb. Will we really see it? If we are condensing Dark Tournament into all of the 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 Yukina Retrieval saga, we might. Jeez. Whoa. Yo, holy crap, man. This is sick. Ooh. Dude, they were like, I know we took a break last episode, but hold my beer. Karama and Karasa just started to laying waste to all the previous fights in the, the season so far. Oh, yep. Oh, fuck yes. Dude, Karama is so good. <laughs> We're totally going to see it. Like I am I'm I'm convinced of that at this point. Oh, please emerge from the fire. Oh, baby got boo boo. About to die, dude. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> Holy shit! That actually doesn't look half bad! Yeah, dude, you fucked up. Now, I will say, I don't know if in live action I want to see Hiei covered in, uh, covered in eyes. I'll be honest though, I don't remember if he actually went full Jagan mode in that fight or not. Dude. Yeah, this is the best fight in the fucking show so far.
chipping down the armor a little bit at a time. He really is a Dark Souls boss, though. Helmet's off. <laughs> oh! Nice! Keiko! And then one more just... <laughs> あなただけで逃げてください。どうして私を助けようとして殺されてしまった方がいるんです。あなたまでそうなったら。にょ。そんな人のためにも逃げないと。それにさっき怪我直してもらったしね。にょ。私は引きずってでもあなたを。にょ
Man, I, w I, want, I want a new Yu Yu game. We haven't had a solid, good, like, uh, Yu Yu Hakusho fighting game in fucking forever. I can't remember if it was like the 64 or the GameCube. I think it might have been the GameCube. It definitely wasn't the 64. What the fuck was I? And I'm not thinking. There was a GameCube game that was really good. It was so much fun. Get us some CC2 and have them make us a, a Yu Yu game. He got you, man. Just needed to last. Ooh. Oh. Oh! <laughs> winner! Karama, winner! He <laughs> That doesn't sound good. Bingo. Yeah, not quite. Sword up, boy. Oh! Ha! He had to just kick the shit out of her. I mean, hey, she was gonna die if he didn't. Dude, slice this fucker in two. Dude, Keiko is so fucking brave, man. Remember what you literally just learned, dude? Come on. Not bad, not bad, but you could have killed this thing, man. Like, come on. You too? Yeah, you too. <laughs> Damn, he's right. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> Ooh. Ah! <laughs> wow, man. This is where all their money went, these last two episodes. No, it wasn't originally the plan to do these last two back to back today because I still have another Reacher episode to edit as well the same very night. But I'm going to watch the next episode, I think, right after this. <laughs> Oh, here. Mm. The wormhole is open. Ooh. That was a good end. Dude, this completely fucking made the last episode worth it. I, I was just, I don't know. Like I said, I didn't hate like the last episode, but it just emotionally wasn't driving me when it probably should have, especially. I still wholly don't like that they killed Genkai so fast. It just wasn't earned. It just wasn't. But this episode, from beginning to end, was paced so well. Obviously, with all the stuff that had been trimmed out and left all of this room for us to kind of really kind of focus on these fights by bringing the final fights of the Dark Tournament to 
Yukina's uh, freedom. Like, this show put all of its money in these fights, man. And to make all these demon powers leap off the page. From that Karama versus Karasu fight, oh my god, best fight in this show. It was quick, it was snappy, the choreo was really good. You know, the utilization of the digi doubles and the CGI for the different abilities and techniques melded in with the live action stuff was all really, really well done. That whole fight felt like it was ripped right off of an anime. Honestly, like, I think like, I don't even remember if I mentioned it in the last episode or not. Actually, no, I cut it out because I didn't want to accidentally spoil anything for like somebody who hadn't been watching the show before. But like, I, I, I had cut out a segment where I was talking about Karama and his demon form about Yoko and about the duality of that of his existence about that separation of the two different forms because I didn't think we would ever see it I figured they would hold that off but the fact that the dark tournament has been merged with Yukina's retrieval I don't know why it skipped my my thought process that we might actually see a iteration of it here and the reveal of Yoko Karama was great that look was great that whole fight was fucking fantastic <laughs> this whole episode was so much fun to watch there was no wasted energy everything had all that tension all that weight all that urgency that i felt the last episode lacked and i i just really felt like it pushed everything forward and then he a sparring uh sparring off against boy was while not as good as the the karama fight was still really, really well done. I mean, not that it's not as good. Production-wise, the way they handled it was really great. It's just it wasn't as dynamic as that fight. But it was still done really, really well. You know, him being lumbering and uh, just armored in this huge tank. You know, this, that slowness was never going to work against Hiei. He just chipped away at his armor and his armor and his armor. He armored up. In the, in the hopes of eventually strengthening himself as well as giving himself increased durability and the eventuality that he would against uh, he would get a rematch against Tagoro. He's not getting that. Not right now, at least. Yeah, I mean, he didn't kill him. I, I don't remember. I know uh, fucking Karasu died. I don't remember if Bowie actually died, died. I, know, I don't think we see him again after the Dark Tournament. Once I realized Yoko showed up, I was like, we are definitely getting a Dragon of the Darkness Flame. And we did. And it looked really sick, man. I loved the aesthetic of it. I loved how wild and rabid that thing is once it was set free. Honestly... Uh, even when Bowie stripped down from his armor, which again, one of the things on top of the fights and a lot of those elements that have really impressed me in this, I think just bringing that armor to life, like it was carbon copy from the page. One of the very like keen things that I was just like, good job, holy shit. But even when he stripped down, like I like that they had that anime, you know, uh, spiritual energy aura pouring off of him. I like the way that they made that look without being... Like, out, without, like, bridging this gap into, like, weird. Like, it looked good. Like, the, the way it was popping off of him, like, steam was a really good effect. The, all the scenes with Keiko and Yukina and Keiko realizing the, gra the, the situation that she's in because up until this point, she doesn't really, other than Yusuke coming back, she doesn't know anything about what has been going on. You know, there's another difference that they did. You know, she only just now found out about this whole spirit world yokai stuff i don't remember there being a scene where they opened up to her about that because i mean hell she was here as a you know observer for the tournament in the anime kurbar's sister and keiko were both in the rafters cheering on team urameshi so by that point she was very much in the know but this was her the reveal of this was nice especially with it coming from yukino when she healed her wound i also think it's an interesting detail and it's not something i remember as well and it would be a small detail anyway so i kind of be surprised if i did remember it either way i think it's interesting because it's also a nice little metaphor and uh you know the fact that yukina can use her magic to heal Keiko, but not herself. You know, her wounds on her body, her scars from Tarukane and from the shackles, all that is still there, but she's able to completely erase Keiko's injuries. And Keiko, uh, you know, I know we never got like a scene of it, but like Keiko, you pulling out those wrestling moves and taking out that guard by, you know, feigning illness, feigning sickness and injury was smart. And then, God, that swift kick she took from Kuwabara. Just, why didn't he, I mean, I don't know if it was a budgetary thing, but why the fuck did he just cut that thing in half? He literally unlocked that ability last episode. He was like, 
it would have been done. It didn't hinder the episode. It's just one of those situations where it's just like, dude, fucking turn around and just slice this thing in half. As much as the Uncanny Valley is on full blast whenever Elder Tagoro is on screen, it wholly makes sense logistically why he is mostly, in most of the scenes, like 100% CGI. His ability to shape shift and move and meld and contort and twist and reshape his body, there's no way to do that practically. Even like the team that worked on the thing probably would never be able to pull off something like that to this extent, man. Like he'd like sunk his stomach into his head, his regrew his arm, then his head came off the side, then he just reshaped, then he grew a fucking tentacle arm with a big old blade on it. I like it. I like what they're doing with it. In action, I, I definitely, it, it's less weird. I can't wait for that fight. And I also can't wait for Yusuke to throw down with Tsuguro. I hope that fight's wicked. And I wonder if he'll go 100%. Like, I just want to know what that looks like in live action. I mean, so far, everything has been very authentic to the anime look-wise. You know, there's been some tweaks, some changes, obviously with Kobar's hair, obviously with Kurama and Hiei's clothes. Everything else has been pretty right off the page. Dude, Gonzo, once I remembered who he was, I don't know how I didn't remember this guy. He looks just like him. This was a good episode. This was really good. So much fun. Can't wait to see how this uh, closes out. This gives me some, re it reinstills me some confidence that this that middle episode was just kind of like a little reprieve and a break on the budget so that they could pull off these last two things. Again, I would I have loved to, a huge fleshed out thing, maybe a, two, three more episodes to fill out the usual Netflix order. Fuck yeah. I do understand, again, the logistics behind that. Aside from the Genkai thing, that is the one thing I cannot get over and is the one thing I do not agree with. It's the flip side of that, uh, and I understand this as well, I mentioned it last episode, I still don't know how you would do that effectively in five episodes. Honestly, with the way things have been going, you didn't actually need to kill Genkai. I mean, hell, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter all that much. They probably could have just avoided that and spent all that time building a relationship together and maybe moved that somewhere else or just never even did it. At the rate that the show's going and the way they're doing this combination of these two arcs, you honestly don't need that death. That's why it just felt like we needed to do some things from the anime just to do some things from the anime. Right now, you got me back. You got me back. You won me back. Guys, what do you think of the episode? How do you feel about all the stuff that threw down in this? Which was your favorite fight between Hiei and Bui or Kurama and Krasu? Should Kuobara have just whipped out the spirit sword? That's what I want to know. Anyway, guys, sound off the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry on the conversation after the video. Hope you enjoyed the reaction. If it did, leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe if you're not already. Remember, if you want to see the following three reaction, check it out over on Patreon or if you're on Marvel's channel, get you access as well. And speaking of before we go, I want to shout out our channel legends. Manny Share, Ryan Karen, York, Horse Scott, Malita, Robert Anguiano, Jeffrey Hale, Jake and Trail, Eric Official, Amy Becca, Casey Wood, JoJo and Sight. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. That's it for this video, guys, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, everybody.